Britain is a hotel nation. The hospitality industry is worth a staggering £114 billion a year to the UK economy, and we have over half a million hotel rooms. But there's a problem. Far too many British hotels aren't up to scratch. Eminent hotelier Ruth Watson has been in the business for over 25 years. For too long, British hotels have offered poor standards. But now, with so many holidaymakers staying at home, it's time to raise the bar. Britain deserves better. Ruth wants to nip the problem in the bud by helping six new hoteliers get it right before the rot sets in. If I can offer advice to first-time hoteliers right from the outset, then I think I can stop them making catastrophic mistakes. What the hell do you know about running a hotel? Absolutely well, nothing. <laughs> I think it's not rocket science, but I, I might be wrong. She'll take them from initial concept to building and design work. This is so prone to disaster. I mean, it just fills me with horror. And send them behind the scenes at Britain's top hotels. This time, it's brothers Rod and Sean in Blackpool. This is kind of the antichrist of cooking. This is OK for a six-year-old, but it's not for a grown person. I can feel the wires. When Ruth sends in her undercover inspector, will the hoteliers get top marks or fail to make the grade? So what do you think you would get as a rating? Blackpool. 1,500 hotels. 60,000 beds. A local tourist economy worth over £1 billion a year. With B&Bs from as little as £12 to lavish rooms for 300 this is Britain's most visited seaside resort. And in the heart of the town's hotel district, the Ken Barry has been trading for 32 years. Brothers and first-time hoteliers Rod and Sean Smallwood came to Blackpool from Teesside three months ago to take over the Zero Star Ken Barry as a going concern. Basically, we've put uh, everything that we have into it, everything we've got on the line. We're both very ambitious people and I think we're very dedicated and we're determined to make it work. The Ken Barry is named after its former owners, Ken and Barry. But Rod and Sean have ambitious plans to reinvent it. I would like this as maybe a three or a four star hotel. That's what I would eventually like to do. The hotel boasts a bar that also doubles as reception, a 60-seater dining room, and 30 bedrooms, all in need of complete refurbishment. But Rod has spent 20 years as a spa manager on cruise liners and is now keen to create his own luxury spa within the walls of the Ken Barry. I'd like to offer hot stones, obviously. Teeth whitening, Oxyjet, which is very famous with your celebrities at the moment. Why shouldn't a regular, you know, hotel that caters for your working class people offer the same treatments? And that's where we stand out above the rest. Rod will focus on the spa and front of house, while small businessman Sean will tackle the renovations himself. It is taking a lot of work to bring it together. We're having to do it ourselves, otherwise it, uh, it wouldn't be viable. With only £20,000 to spend, they're relying on the hotel's income to help fund the rebuild. But with a shockingly low occupancy of just 10% and a price of £27.50 a night, they need customers fast. It's Christmas time at the Ken Barry, but with no guests, there's little festive cheer. Rod and Sean have called on Ruth Watson to lift their spirits and turn their fortunes around. With 30 rooms, many crowded with three or four beds, the hotel feels more like a hostel. So what do you feel about this? We're aware the rooms need refurbing, but it's typical of Blackpool. There's 30 rooms, but how many actual people at the moment can 78. you 78. 78. 78. 78. Ah! Because it was the case of, you know, rack them and stack them and put people in. You have got to get out of the mentality of racking and stacking because it's important to actually take these rooms out of the dismal mediocrity that they have at the moment where you can only charge, you know, 25, 30 quid into something that you can charge 50, 60, 70 pounds for. I didn't come to Blackpool to be a typical hotelier and just stack people and rack them in the room. 
that's not what I'm about. We know where it is at the minute, we know what a lot of them are at the minute, but we want to make it exclusive. What I'm getting from both of them is a, is a real sense of enthusiasm and, and I think they will work hard. I like their relationship with each other, but they don't know how to run a hotel. Despite their desire for four stars, the brothers' priority is not something that will boost their rating. So we're down in the bowels of the earth. This is not the most glorious area I've ever been into. Sean's basement tool room is Rod's chosen location for his luxury spa. Now, you're going to have to define what you're meaning by spa, because when I think of spas, I think of gyms and swimming pools and huge square footage, and this is a rather comfy little room. I think it's what we offer in the rooms. We want to do corrective work, so you've got your facials, but also you've got hot stones, which is more your relaxation. I am going to query the whole notion. It takes the most inordinate amount of time just to run a hotel. Yes. You can't shut the door at five or six o'clock. You know, you are literally doing the hours from seven in the morning till midnight, one o'clock in the morning. You could spread yourself a little bit thin. I mean, the spa, yes, is my background. Uh, yes, is what I have a passion for. And, you know, the spa will go ahead because it's one of the main things that I want to do. Ruth knows it's better business to focus on a facility which could earn them some stars and a steady income, the dining room. Rod has had a brainwave. We would like to make it into a restaurant in the evening. I've got an idea of Parmesan's, which is very big in the what? northeast. What? Parmesan. It's fillet of chicken or pork, and yeah. it's, it's flattened to about this area, then it's fried, and then it's covered in a uh, cheese. cheese sauce, like a white sauce, and then covered oh, in cheese. Doesn't... Comes with salad, it comes with chips, or, you know, wherever dressing. <laughs> Just something that's different. That's called parmesans. I mean, it's just ah. Over in the northeast, it's the most popular dish, even more popular than fish and chips. I think it would go down very well in Blackpool. I think you're on a winner there. It fills me with horror, but I can see it working. The Ken Barry is in a great central location, next to Blackpool's biggest shopping centre. Facing onto a busy tourist street. The dining room is a huge, unexploited asset, but, like the rest of the hotel, it needs work. Huge problem with these ghastly, horrible, burgundy paper cloths. The, the rest of it, unfortunately, is in a time warp. You sit here and you just know the food's going to be terrible because of what this looks like. Having somebody who's got the reputation of having a successful hotel is going to push us even more. I don't mind a bit of criticism. I don't mind people saying, you know, you've got a big challenge. It's nothing that I didn't already know. Make this into a really buzzy, brasserie type place. It can be a success because, frankly, you've got so much dross around you, it's not that difficult for the cream to rise to the top of the jug. You know, you've just got to make sure you're the cream. A busy restaurant would not only raise the profile of the Ken Barry, but would bring in the cash they desperately need to refurbish the rooms. What I feel that they need to do to differentiate themselves from all the rest of the hotels that lie in the myriad streets of Blackpool is by actually creating more of a restaurant rather than a hotel dining room. If they can make that work, then they've got a ready-made cash flow, not just in the summer months, but throughout the year. With 10 million potential customers visiting Blackpool each year, Rod and Sean must capture a slice of this lucrative market or it could be curtains for the Ken Barry. The summer season is rapidly approaching and things are heating up. Are there going to be spa wars when Ruth and Rod go head to head? Is Rod just on an ego trip? Nobody's gonna come to stay for a week's holiday in Blackpool in a horrible room just to have one treatment. Brothers and novice hoteliers Rod and Sean Smallwood plan to relaunch their zero-star Blackpool Hotel, the Ken Barry, in just six months. Rod wants to create a spa, but hotelier Ruth Watson thinks they should concentrate on opening a restaurant, serving a speciality from their native northeast known as Parmesan's. It's chicken or pork or fish coated in breadcrumbs, deep fried, covered in a bechamel sauce with cheese smothered all over the top, usually served with uh, chips and salads, garlic sauce, or on special occasions you can also serve it with vegetables if you want to. 
It doesn't matter what I think about the Parmesans because Rod and Sean are clearly passionate about them and I think they'll do really well. A good restaurant is an asset to any establishment, but you do need to know how to run one. So I'm sending Rod and Sean off to London's Cavendish Hotel, which has a fabulous restaurant and where I think they're going to pick up some very important skills. Rod, right, nice to meet you. I'm Kieran, General Manager of the Cavendish. Very nice to meet you. I'm Sean. Working a busy lunch shift, both back and front of house, will be great practice for the brothers. All right, can we go away with one cast liver medium, two trout, a pancake and a new potatoes? A restaurant at the Ken Barry could be a more lucrative asset than a spa, but running one still requires knowledge and hard work. Everybody thinks that they can open a restaurant. What they don't realise is there is a lot of technical skill to it. The attention to detail I do not feel is going to be there. I get the feeling we may have a couple of drop plates at lunchtime, but uh, that's life. Like the Ken Barry, the Cavendish has a 60-seater restaurant, which turns over £740,000 a year in revenue. If Rod and Sean's restaurant was as busy, it could easily bring in £5,000 a week. You want to call that one on? Out of the seat. Everyone to the kitchen, they all need to hear you. Yeah? Okay, so yeah. This experience will be vital. Unable to afford a full staff, the brothers will have to run the restaurant themselves. So Rod must learn to organize food orders and get them out on time. One smoked salmon, one chicken liver, one smoked. Okay, start again. So that's two right, smoked salmon. Start again. Tell them how they're cooked. Tell them how they're cooked. Yeah. Medium. How do you know that? Because it says medium. He was a little bit sort of. Um, um, faffy, if you want, is the way. The people that you're working with, you have to be absolutely 100% disciplined with them, and everybody's responsible for something, and everyone has to be accountable. And can I have the travel as well, please? And you want the travel as yeah, well? Please. Sean is waiting on tables, a job which demands attentive customer service. Sean, table 30 have ordered. What do you think's wrong on the table? What do you think's wrong on the table they've ordered? Stress. Uh, they have ordered. What do you think is wrong on the table? They've got menus on the table. Let's clear those, yeah? He's a little slow um, and he's very quiet. He's trying his best, but uh, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done with them. The brothers must learn fast if they want to launch their parmesans for the start of the season. And with the English seaside back in vogue, this summer could reverse their fortunes. What was this for? Two chicken levers. We don't have two chicken levers on all one. One. Rod one. thinks his years on cruise liners have equipped him for hotel life. But restaurant kitchens are tight ships needing very different skills. The other one's what? It'll be just three cold Both dishes. Salmon, salmon, so salmon will come now, chicken will come now. It's hot and it's hectic. We're trying to remember what you're plating with menu with more orders coming in. It's like I'm doing liver, but I'm ordering chicken. You know, <laughs> it's a bit hectic. After two and a half hours, Sean and Rod have made it through Ruth's restaurant boot camp, and it's been a real eye-opener. We are used to serving northern people at one. Small plates, big amounts. Here, it's fancy plates, less amounts. You know, and I think that's the way it should be. At least now we've seen our professional establishment should be run, so at the end of the day, we need to make ours run the same. Mm. Yeah. A good restaurant is a great step up on the star ratings ladder, which Rod and Sean say they want to climb. But there are many other criteria to fulfill in their quest for accreditation. In England alone, there are 24,000 star rated businesses. To be classed as a hotel, you must offer dinner, possess a liquor license, and have at least six bedrooms, all of which must be en suite and meet minimum requirements of bed and room size. You also need to be open seven days a week. Like most accommodation in Blackpool, the Ken Barry doesn't meet these basic criteria, so can only be rated as guest accommodation, which requires a less formal service and needs fewer facilities. Rod and Sean want to create one of the best places to stay in Blackpool, so Ruth's giving them six months to improve the Ken Barry before she sends in her secret inspector from the tourist board. It will reveal how far they've come and how far they still have to go. Back in Blackpool, Ken Barry life continues. Rod is living in the hotel while Sean is forced to commute from his home in rural Teesside. But with a six hour round trip, 
the renovations are proving a thankless task. I actually went to open up half past seven this morning, walked into the office, and there was, it was just raining in, through the ceiling. Every day there's more repairs to do, you know. Quite a few times I thought, oh God, well, what have I got myself into? Because I didn't expect to be having to do so many repairs constantly, just, just constant repairs. Ruth wants Rod and Sean to increase their revenue. To do this, they need to entice new customers through the door. Good design and layout is crucial, and it starts with the guest's first impression. So Rod, you've got this great frontage. You can see in, or you could see in, if we didn't have canopies. I hate canopies. You're in Blackpool on the northwest coast. You're not in Portugal. You haven't got the sun beating down and fading all the furniture. I mean, it's just rubbish. The restaurants that do really well in big cities now are completely open to the so public. So people can see other people having a drink, having some food, enjoying themselves. This is a something that we've really got to pick up on. I think it's a waste if you don't. The Ken Barry's dining room is in an excellent location, with huge windows facing onto one of Blackpool's busiest streets. By losing the canopies and brightening up the frontage, passers-by would get a clear view of the restaurant and be attracted in. Inside, Rod and Sean need to strip out the old-fashioned decor and replace the tired furniture. With the canopies removed, the dark dining room will be flooded with light, making it bright, clean and inviting. The hotel needs a new name to go with its new look. In order to avoid the Ken Barry becoming the Sean Rod, Ruth has a suggestion to make. Can I ask you something? Is there anything in Blackpool actually called Hotel Blackpool? I don't know, actually. Well, you know, I think there might not be, and I think it's worth actually just investigating something as simple as that. Just see if anything is actually called that. But this hotel needs more than just a name change. The 30 bedrooms are in desperate need of attention. I can feel the wires. I can feel the wires. I have had beds like this. Oh, I have been have given few. beds like this. You can actually almost pick up the, the wire. In this room, I don't think it's big enough to support two beds. What we've got over here is a very narrow single bed, two foot six rather than three yeah. foot bed. Um, would you like to lie in this, Rod? Thank you. Be my guest. Does it make you feel like a hospital patient? Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, it does. This is OK for a six-year-old, but it's not for a grown person. But most importantly, what I do is to designate the rooms that genuinely can support three, four people and then get rid of all the extraneous beds in the other ones because you can charge a bit more if you're doing a nicer room with a bigger bed, better facilities, you'll get back that income. I know that she thinks they're diabolical, I know that she thinks they're an absolute disgrace, but at least we know we can work on them and we can improve them. They can't go down, they can only improve. Since they're strapped for cash, Ruth wants Rod and Sean to concentrate on getting just one room absolutely right. This showroom will create a style for the rest of the hotel to emulate when finances improve. It could also impress the secret inspector, who'll visit the Ken Barry in six months' time. It's January, and Rod's pushing ahead with his grand plans to build a spa at the Ken Barry. He's decided to relocate it from the basement to a vacant upstairs bedroom. OK, so this is room 26. It's a bigger room. It's also in the right place, and it's a, a darker room to set the ambience. From a bit of the research that I've done, there's no what I would call you know, a spa hotel in Blackpool. I mean, yes, a lot of the top hotels offer spa treatments. There's a few of them got pools. But I think people want a bit more. I'd be interested in all of the clients coming here to relax, chill out, enjoy themselves and look good when they leave Blackpool instead of looking rough and ready like they do. <laughs> yeah, like they do when they've left Blackpool. Oh, on yeah. On the drink all weekend. Yeah. For now, Rod's luxury spa will have to wait. It's one of the most important dates in every Blackpool hotelier's calendar. 170 then. The Racing Pigeon Show of the Year. We're actually fully booked this weekend. Uh, yeah, but of course it's the Pigeon Weekend. With nearly 30,000 pigeon fanciers flying in from across Europe, 
For the first time since Rod and Sean took over, the Ken Barry is packed out. We're fully booked. Can somebody build me some rooms overnight? <laughs> but the thing is, though, it's not always like that. So if it was like that every day, all week, it would be great. They should be cashing in, but with zero star rooms, they can only charge £27.50 a night. And with just the two of them running the hotel, Sean has had to put down his paintbrush and put on a penny. Maybe, yeah. The renovations have also been hampered by essential fire safety works demanded by the council, which have consumed £8,000 of Sean's budget. The showroom Ruth asked for is still a building site. I haven't got on as much as I would have liked to, but it's just going to stretch out a little bit longer than what we initially thought. I've ripped the bathroom out a minute, it's, it's a bit of a wreck. It's all stripped, just stripped down to a shell. I would like to have been a little bit further on with it, just I'm only one person. It's March. Ruth is back in Blackpool, and with the Ken Barry's relaunch scheduled for the start of summer, just 12 weeks away, she's hoping to see a huge difference. Three months down the line, why hasn't anything changed? Because it's only been three months. It's not cheap to change at all. No, no but, but we it's, know it needs it's doing. your shop front, yes. absolutely, literally. I would have thought you wanted the name change, it looking fresh, looking welcoming, looking like somebody would want to stay there. And I'm really quite aghast that you haven't felt the same way. Well, we have, but we've just had what we think is priorities. When I come back in June, I think it is, is this going to be any different or is it still going to look like this? Hopefully it'll be different. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully, yeah. That doesn't show any commitment whatsoever. It depends. I'm staggered in your, in your, your the, change in your stance first visit gonna change this gonna take this down not gonna have this this is awful this is lots of thing and now it's all well okay it'll be whatever you know blah. yeah no it's, 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 it's already it's been okay. three yeah. months because <laughs> three, three months but this is a major priority well you better show me what you've been doing or not doing inside i think the exterior may be unchanged but one area of the ken barry has been lavished with attention Okay, so what's going on here? This is what we're going to make into the treatment rooms. Um, I'm still at a loss to understand why you're focusing on this before you focus on the bedrooms. Rod seems to think that the minute we lose, we could be losing revenue. Because I've got people inquiring about it, I wanted to offer that. But set. they're only inquiring because you're telling them. Now, you could be telling them how wonderful the hotel was, but you can't because you haven't actually done anything to the hotel to make it look wonderful. It's an extra and thing to pull them in, isn't it, if it's got the trim, But so. I, I'm sorry, what you're doing here is it seems to me the wrong way round. Nobody's going to come to stay for a week's holiday in Blackpool in a horrible room just to have one treatment in your room here and that isn't going to be enough of a lure. Personally I disagree with what Ruth said about the treatment room because if I can have a room generating money that gives us money to put into other areas of the business it can be you know an added bonus to any business. Rod and Sean have devoted so much energy to the spa they've made scant progress modernising the tatty bedrooms. And the restaurant that could be serving their speciality parmesans and bringing in much needed revenue is untouched and unopened. I have to question, is Rod just on an ego trip? Is this all about him, about the treatment rooms, about him wanting to show off? Is it anything to do with hotels? Because right now, this hotel feels as if it's redundant. Ruth says that spas, she doesn't think spas will work, but you know, spa, Ruth has no history or background. I mean, I've been in hotels as long as Ruth has, and I've run spas, and I know the revenue they bring in and the popularity that people want them. I think the reason is because she's scared because it's a domain she doesn't know anything about. I do. With just a few weeks to go until the summer season, Ruth's about to get a crash course in Parmesan. This is kind of the antichrist of cooking. And Rod goes on a charm offensive with the spa. You've got a medical microdermabrasion abrasion machine. That actually will draw blood. That's how deep that machine works. Excellent. OK. Brother.
brothers Rod and Sean Smallwood want to relaunch their Blackpool Hotel for the summer season. But Ruth Watson is concerned they've got their priorities wrong. Many hotel guests don't want a spa treatment, but they all want to eat. So I'm sending Rod and Sean off to London's Haymarket Hotel, where despite having fantastic leisure facilities, they know what their core business is all about. Renowned for its strong design ethos, the five-star Haymarket in Piccadilly is one of the capital's favorite hotels. With 50 individually styled rooms ranging in price from 250 to £3,000 a night. Director of Operations Carrie Wicks is giving Rod and Sean a guided tour. Nice to meet you. Operations. I'm Sean. I'm, sure. I'm Sean. Rod. The two hotels might be at opposite ends of the rating scale, but they do have one thing in common. Just like the Ken Barry, the Haymarket's restaurant faces onto a busy central tourist street. Unlike the Ken Barry, theirs is open. So this is Brewers, our restaurant here at the Haymarket. So you're actually open to the general public and not just your customers? Oh yes, I mean not just in-house guests at all. I mean the whole point is obviously to attract as many people as possible. I mean you wouldn't survive if it was just in-house guests. With an attractive facade in a prime location, it easily draws in passers-by and generates 46% of the hotel's turnover. Footfall is very important. The whole point of that is making the outside look amazingly attractive and, and drawing people in. We get a lot of footfall, so you know, there's no reason why we can't be as busy as that, provided we can make it into a, a nice, respectable uh, restaurant. Downstairs from the restaurant is the Haymarket's pool complex, with a modest beauty room tucked away out of sight. With only 5% of guests having treatments, it contributes just 0.3% to the Haymarket's profits. So here's our treatment room. Yeah. It's a small room, yeah. But it yeah. yes, it's compact and it works. Um, I think the whole point for us is that it's, it's an add-on facility. Yeah. You know, it's not a full-blown spa, which yeah. we don't want to do. It's a bit of a retreat, yeah. and they can relax in here. If Sean and Rod follow the Haymarket's model, their restaurant could not only raise their profile and earn them stars, but bring in a hundred times more than the spa. Rod remains unconvinced. I personally would have more beauty rooms. You know, I would offer more of an offering, especially to this, the type of clientele that they carry. I would have, you know, fantastic treatments, blown mind treatments for the people. And, you know, I would, I would make more use of that facility, personally. But are Rod's plans realistic? For spas, people generally head to country house retreats, such as the Grove in Hertfordshire, Watley Manor in the Cotswolds, and Ragdale Hall in Leicestershire. Dedicating up to 70% of their floor space to treatment rooms, pools, and relaxation areas, they charge up to £400 for a day's pampering. Can Rod really expect to compete with these five-star establishments? With a few short months until the Ken Barry's relaunch, Ruth has a plan to force the resistant brothers into action. I want to do an exercise today to trial these parmesans to see how they're going to go down. Okay. So, suggestion is, Rod, you're the flamboyant one, out there getting some people in, and Sean, you and I, um, down to the kitchen and doing some parmesans. We're opening a parmesan restaurant and we're looking for people to come and sample it free. No? Okay. Ladies, would you like a nice parmesan in our uh, new cafe and restaurant? Ah, OK, ladies. Would you like a free parmesan? I'm one, but no, thank you. Ah, OK. <laughs> With the refurbishment progressing so slowly, Ruth takes the opportunity to find out from Sean what's holding them up. I'm not accusing you of being a lazy sod. You have not been a lazy sod. You've actually worked very hard. What I am concerned about is whether the work is being directed and focused in such a way that in you're actually right going place. to get a result. What's Rod doing? Bookings and... I understand, you know, for the phone rings, you take a booking. That takes, like, five minutes, you know. I understand an email comes in. That... For Rod. <laughs> Not with Rod. He has a full conversation when he takes a booking. Rod's got to stop spending half an hour on the phone with people. I think he's got to stop faffing around bits of paper and doing what have you. I think he really has got to get his head down. I don't really mind doing drumming up business for business, but I'm not usually a type of person that would go out and just chat to anybody on the streets. 
we're opening a Parmesan restaurant. So we're wanting to offer you free samples of the Parmesan restaurant. I like the old generation, the nice little light. Uh, and is it free? It's free. And is it free? It's free. And they enjoy things free. <laughs> In the kitchen, Sean is cutting corners on the sauce. Why anybody would need to make a packet, Béchamel sauce mix? I mean, what the fuck? This is kind of the antichrist of cooking. Yeah. <laughs> As Rod arrives with his taste testers, Ruth finds out that Parmesans don't exactly live up to their name. Have you got your Parmesan grated and ready to go? We have the cheddar cheese. So no Parmesan? No Parmesan natural cheese. Why are they called Parmesan? Oh, that baffles me a little bit as well. I'm not sure, Ruth, to be quite honest. What I'd like to do is show you all what the Parmesan actually looks like when we serve it. Uh, basically, it's chicken breast coated in breadcrumbs and then we deep fry it, cover it in a beautiful uh, bechamel sauce with our own special ingredients that we have. Can I just ask, Rod, do you fry it in olive oil or is it just vegetable fats? Cook it in uh, an olive but oil. But you use like. olive oil, you don't use... Yeah. yeah. No. Having seen him talking to customers and actually not telling the truth about ingredients, making up what was in the parmesan and how it was cooked, actually I now have a little bit of a question mark about how much I'm going to continue believing what Rod says. How are you finding these parmesan? Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, you like yes, them? Lovely. Mm. Yes, very nice. Is it what's in the sauce? It's very, very nice. Cheesy sauce. Mm. It's lovely. Parmesans are a winner with the Blackpool crowd. But for a successful restaurant and a good star rating, decor is crucial too. What would make you go into a hotel? The brightness of it. The brightness, colourful, the front appearance. When you came in, did you think um, it needed work done? Did you think it looks no. just fine as it is? Yeah, it looks a bit dull, you know. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. What would you do to it? A brightness up. It's vital they get the restaurant refurbished and open. The summer season is just weeks away, and with Rod devoting all his time to the spa, the restaurant and the rest of the hotel have been sidelined. I have to say, I am disappointed at the lack of change. I think if you concentrated as much on the hotel as you have on the treatment rooms, we'd be a lot further forward here, in a nutshell. Rod, set yourself some targets within the next three months. I don't think this restaurant needs to take more than a week to completely refurbish and have a completely different look about it. They want to see one bedroom done. They want to see the front looking smart, bright. And the name of the hotel should be your first decision. There's only two of us. And as you can see, we serve, we cook. Obviously, we know everything needs doing, but uh, we just can't snap our fingers and do it all at once. Different areas will take us different lengths of time to do. So we'll look at the easy things and do them first. But despite their reservations, as soon as Ruth leaves, the brothers get to work. Sean is cracking on decorating the showroom, while Rod demolishes the dining area. It's a super glue to the wall. Now you know why we don't take things apart. No more for the Ken Barry, the knick-knacks and decorative plates inherited from the previous owners. It looks really bare now. But don't you think it looks bigger? It just looks bare. It really does look bare. Take some of the pictures. Get them back up. Rod's also taken Ruth's advice on rebranding the Ken Barry as the Blackpool. Looks better than the old ones, doesn't it? Is that all right? Yeah, looks very nice. Although he's decided to go ahead with new canopies. We looked at the hotel without canopies, and when we've looked down the street, it just become another regular hotel. So I'm sorry, but you know, Ruth was wrong. It's different, and we've stuck by what we said we were going to do. The only thing she hasn't seen, which I didn't want anybody to see, was the new logo, and that's purely because I didn't want anybody copying it. You know, diamond in the rough, basically. That's what we are. <laughs> It's six months since Ruth's first visit, and Rod and Sean have finally acted on some of her suggestions. No more the shabby Ken Barry Hotel with its tattered awnings. Now it's the all-new Blackpool. Ruth wanted them to ditch the ubiquitous burgundy, and now it stands out in purple and white. 
With 30 bedrooms in need of work, Ruth advised the brothers to concentrate on just one. Now, after months of hard graft, Sean has created a showroom. The brothers have resisted the temptation to squeeze in multiple beds and have just one full-sized double. The dining room was formerly an homage to old-fashioned tea rooms. It's now been reworked into Rod's vision of brasserie chic, albeit in an unusual color scheme. Room 26 was a drab twin bedroom. But against Ruth's advice, Rod and Sean have gone ahead with their plans to turn it into a spa. Last time I came, no change. This time, a big change. So well done on that. I did make a point that I didn't think there was enough sunshine in Blackpool to merit the, the rays being screened out internally, but you obviously disagree. So tell me about the logo, TB. The Blackpool. The Blackpool. You didn't think TB actually has another connotation? I didn't think of another connotation no. for it. <laughs> OK. Ooh. Different colours, yeah, different yeah. pictures, different. Despite its dark brown and purple makeover, the restaurant is still not open. I'd like to see this place full now. I'd like it to be trading in the evening because you surely need the income. We need to get things finished in here what first. What are we doing? You want to get it finished. What do we need to finish still? There's not, not, nothing major. Sean, so this restaurant is something that could be providing you with revenue and a cash flow. To be quite no. honest, we haven't really put 100% thought into this because our minds be on a lot of other things. Let's just say that £15 was your average spend, including drinks and things. Times 60, you're looking at £900. That's what you're missing. I just would like to see it open. Trading, people, money. Rod and Sean could have taken time during the last six months to make small improvements throughout the hotel. But instead, they've chosen to concentrate on the spa. My word, you have finished. You have made a difference. How much time did it take? Oh, you were looking six weeks. Right, that's a lot of work. The time and effort it took to do this, and you've done a really good job. If you'd done that downstairs and come to this a few months down the line, that would have been my preference. Yeah. This is something which is an additional treat for people who want treatment. Um, it's not your core business, and that's my problem. It's meant to be a hotel with a treatment room, not a treatment room with a hotel tacked on. It's June. The summer season has started, and Rod and Sean are throwing a relaunch party to introduce the Blackpool to Blackpool. The unopened restaurant makes an ideal space to demonstrate Rod's beauty treatments though he's suffering some teething problems with his new equipment. The hot stove is done. It's now the teeth whitening that I need. Oh, that's going to smell of fish because it's a new caddy. Ruth's a bit unsure about the spa because to Ruth it's unknown. I know Ruth's wrong because there's nothing better than to finish, you know, a stressful day to go back to your hotel and have a massage. They've invited local dignitaries, journalists and even the tourist board to help put the Blackpool on the map. For Rod, it's an opportunity to sell his wares. We do teeth whitening, number one teeth whitening in the UK. Lift the teeth between five and 12 shades in 45 minutes. A hot stone massage is the creme de la creme of massages. Works for up to six to seven weeks after you've had the treatment. This can drop a dress size in an hour and 15 minutes. This is basically the Rolls Royce of facials. This is where we do the treatment. You've got a medical microdermabrasion machine. That actually will draw blood. That's how deep that machine works. With the showroom, they want to demonstrate what they hope to be the future of their guest house. This is one of the rooms that we've actually done in the hotel. It's functional. It does the job. Eventually, what we'd like to do is all of them like this. But there are still 29 bedrooms and communal areas in the style of the old Ken Barry. It's a bit of a contrast going from that the room that's been done up and looks really lovely and then you go down the corridor and it's a bit of a shock really because I think it needs to, you know, they'd have to do that pretty quickly, I think, to keep the business. 
I feel quite relieved that today's gone as good as it has. Loads of people were asking for cards and wanting to book in for next year and for this year, so it was positive. Yeah, it was really good. I, I thought it was a good day. The day's gone well, but the brothers have no idea that their biggest test is yet to come. Ruth has booked an undercover visit from an official inspector who will rate the new look Blackpool. Drinking glass, not as clean as it could be. We have a nice big mark on the underside of this pillow slip. He's reported back to me about the rating that he thinks you would get. It's one week after Rod and Sean's launch of the new look Blackpool. They've revamped one bedroom, which they plan to replicate throughout, and have completely redecorated the dining room. To see how close they've come to their four-star aspirations, Ruth is sending in her secret inspector, armed with a hidden camera. Employed by Visit England, the official tourist board, his assessment could make or break the Blackpool. Due to the undercover nature of his work, his identity cannot be revealed. Very dark. One of his first assessments is the welcome he receives. But there's no one there to greet him. I've got the right place, haven't I? Yeah, you yes, I've oh, got <laughs> Moving through the hotel, the inspector bypasses the spa room. His main concerns are bedroom standard and cleanliness. But instead of the showroom, he's been allocated one of the 29 unchanged rooms. So this is the room I've been allocated. It's um, a relatively small double room, a uh, four foot bed with a staining to the top of the bedboard. A nice big mark on the underside of this pillow slip. And under that we have a plastic mattress protector and certainly isn't acceptable in the national schemes. The room is thoroughly inspected. If less time had been spent on the spa, Rod and Sean could have made basic improvements to these bedrooms. Looking at the decor generally, it's uh, quite basic and we have a, a rather dated border around the top. The windows themselves um, are actually not particularly clean. We've got a small shower room, a slight cigarette burned to the edge of the shelf here which draws the eye on arrival. Um, drinking glass, not possibly as clean as it could be. The following morning, the inspector has breakfast. Thank you very much. He scrutinises the service, food and hospitality. At the end of the inspector's overnight stay, Ruth breaks the news to Rod and Sean. Yesterday, you had a visitor at room 12 who was an inspector from Visit England. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. No, I know you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I actually said to Rod, he looks yeah. very official. We'll see what he has to say. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, how did you find things? The room itself, a little on the small side possibly, and certainly some rather dated aspects, uh, and quite a lot of marking and staining to the headboard, and a few marks on the pillow slips, which detracted from an otherwise good yeah. overall perception, I would suggest. How did you find your welcome? There was a point there yesterday where I wasn't too sure if I'd got the right itself. It wasn't the, wasn't the best first impression, to be honest. It's not over yet. As part of Visit England's inspection, the assessor must look round the rest of the hotel, including the revamped showroom, advising Rod and Sean on areas for improvement. If you're just wanting to wash your hands, there's no soap as such. No, you know, just a simple wrapped bar of uh, guest soap, maybe. So will the inspector's report award the Blackpool their desired four-star rating? Well, the inspector's done his tour with you and he's reported back to me about the rating that he thinks you would get. Currently, you would get one star. Now, if you can roll out the standard that you've shown in room 10, the new room, throughout the hotel, and into the public areas as well, then you'd be looking at a soft three-star. Well, I think three-star is quite a good rating for Blackpool, isn't it, if we can achieve that? But Ruth's not satisfied quite as easily as Sean. Cleanliness and hospitality cost nothing, but they fell short on both in the inspection. A little attention to detail would have dealt with stained headboards, rubber sheets and cigarette burns. We are looking a long way from the original mission statement, which was pull out something really exceptional here. 
The thing about the treatment room is it doesn't impinge on your rating in any way, shape or form. It could be a minor income stream. It's not going to be the major income stream. That should come from the hotel rooms. It should come from the dining room and the restaurant here. Are you the best hotel in Blackpool? Will you be the best hotel in Blackpool? In Rod's mind we are and we will be. The question I'm asking myself is, do I think you make good hoteliers? And my answer would be probably no. I actually think if you could come to a reality check and say, this really is a three-star hotel, but let's make it a bloody good one, I think it would liberate you and enable you to actually get on and do things a lot more quickly in a funny kind of way. And because you're not sort of always then trying to second guess yourself. We like to prove people wrong and we are fighters. We are, we are the type of people that will, you know, fight to make something work if it's possible of working. We've got, a, we've got a bit of a challenge and we've got, you know, a couple of years to turn things around and get things up and running. Only time will tell, but, but uh, I can't see any reason why we shouldn't be packed out the door. There's no doubt that Rod and Sean have made some progress here, uh, not least the name. Yes, it's got new canopies. Yes, the dining room's different. Yes, the treatment room looks really sparkling. And they've made a pretty good fist of doing room 10. But at the end of the day, the mission statement from Rod was this hotel was going to be above and beyond anything that was currently being offered in Blackpool. And I have to say that that's just not the case. <laughs> <laughs>